Hello, I'm Don Cobble, and I want to welcome you to Questions and Replies. This is a, something new that we're putting on our website where I will reply to questions that are asked. I get emails, texts, phone calls, and then talk to people in person. And a lot of the questions that I get asked, I get asked over and over. So I've decided when I get asked something so many times that I will then make a video, post it, then I can tell people, you know what, you need to go watch that on the website. Now, what I'm going to do is to do a short version of answering, and this is concerning the coronavirus, and then I'll do a more detailed one going into the scripture verses for why I say the things I'm saying. But right now, it'll just be to basically introduce it, and you say, okay, I want to know more about that, or you may say, I'm so offended, I wouldn't even listen to the second lesson, because I realize the position that I'm going to present is probably going to be offensive to a substantial uh, portion of believers. Now, I'm not doing this to be offensive. I'm doing it because I believe I will be held accountable for the words that I'm speaking right now and that I'll stand before the Lord and give an account of all these words. So because of that, I'm going to say truly what I believe. Now, I am not speaking as a prophet. I've heard so many prophetic voices, and they're all over the place on this thing of the coronavirus. I'm going to speak from what I've looked at in the Word of God, what I believe is happening based on the Word of God, and then you can uh, take it or leave it. But here's the first thing that I believe. I believe that the coronavirus is going to get worse before it gets better. Now, I am not saying that because I want it to get worse. I hope it disappears tomorrow. I don't think it's going to, but it would be fine with me. I believe it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I'm going to present to you why I believe we're even going through this. And I'm asking you to prayerfully consider the, the points that I raise. Now, I'm not going to be able to go into the verses in this short version to explain why I conclude the things that I conclude. And, and again, I'm not speaking as a prophet. I'm speaking as someone who's looking in the Word of God and saying, this is what the Word of God says about these types of things, and here's how I believe it applies to us. So here we go. The, the first question that I primarily have gotten is this. Is this virus from God or from the devil? Okay. Now, I'm not going to be able to pull up all the slides for you to see. They'll be there uh, behind, and I don't know if you can read them as, you know, a lot of people watch on their phones and things. But in, in response to the first question, do I believe this is the devil or God? Uh, I don't believe it's the devil or God, though I believe both are involved in it. Uh, I believe this is a judgment that we invited. And you say, who would invite a judgment? Well, according to 1 Corinthians 11, if you do not judge yourself, God said, I will judge you. But when I judge you, I'm chastening you so that you do not go through the final judgment, that you escape the judgment that's unto destruction. And so from this verse, we see two principles. There's a judgment that leads us to repentance, and then there's a judgment of which we are destroyed. I do not believe the coronavirus is a judgment of which we are destroyed. I'm not saying some people aren't going to die. I'm saying, though, it's not going to destroy the nation, but it's a judgment unto repentance for the purpose of turning us so that we would judge ourselves and not be destroyed. So that's, that's number one. Number two, I'm talking to the church. I'm not talking to the heathens. The heathens out there aren't the ones that are bringing this judgment. It's the church. Now, I realize this is going to offend many Christians, but we are responsible we're the gatekeepers, a verse that we're going to probably skip by, but in this lesson is this, whatever you church, by no on earth will be bound in the heavens. And whatever you church allow on earth is going to be allowed from the heavens. You're the gatekeepers. You're responsible. So God judges us so that we do not be, uh, that we do not allow things that shouldn't be allowed. And this is why I believe part of the reason this is happening. But another question that's asked to me when in dealing with this, does this mean that I think people that are getting sick or are dying are the, the cause of, of this judgment? No, I do not. 
Good people die in battle. Good people die in battle. But it's usually related to sin, meaning this. The, the verse we would talk about and we'll talk about in the longer lesson is in 2 Samuel when King David was trying to hide that he had gotten Bathsheba pregnant and tried to pin it on Uriah and he wouldn't do it. So David said, I'm going to have Uriah killed so I can hide my sin. And he sent him into battle. And when he sent him into battle for no other reason than to have him killed, David lost good, valiant, noble soldiers. And so this tells us two things. Number one is David was trying to cover sin in the things that he did. And David's decision as a leader caused people who were under his leadership to lose their lives. So there was innocent people, so to speak, who died because of David's sin. It's the same thing here. If this is a judgment unto repentance, innocent people are going to lose their lives. Now, I, I, listen, I'm not saying this to say that I'm hoping this happens and I want more to happen. As I said, I hope tomorrow the whole thing disappears. But I'm being realistic. Biblically, I do not see it disappearing. And I'm wanting you to understand why and, and what I see, at least biblically. And that is this. This is a judgment, and it's primarily caused because the church is not judging itself properly, and we are the salt of the earth. We are the gate keepers. We are the ones that bind and loose what's happening. This nation is dead without a living, lively, godly church. And yet the church has taken on the ways of this nation, the ways of this world. And so I think this is why this is happening. Now, I'm going to pull up a, a verse here because I believe this is the key of which we can't go into great detail on right now in this short uh, lesson. But in Revelation 2.14, Jesus said, speaking to one of the churches, I have a few things against you because there are those of you who hold to the doctrine of Balaam. And the doctrine of Balaam was this, and he says it right here, that you told Balak, teach my people that they can commit sexual immorality. Now, why would Balak want to teach God's people that they could commit sexual immorality? Because Balak knew and Balaam taught him this. If I teach them it's okay to sin, they'll bring judgment on themselves and I can prevail against them. This is exactly what's going on in our nation. Churches are now teaching the doctrine of Balaam, which Jesus said he hates. We're teaching. You know why? We're, do, we're embracing LGBTQ. We're saying same-sex marriage is fine. Homosexuality is fine. It's just a different way. Lesbianism's fine. We can ordain homosexuals now. What? This is the doctrine of Balaam. That's not okay. Oh, yes, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. We are now teaching people this is okay in the church. Now, like I said, I'm not talking about the heathens out in the world. In a sense, I don't care what they do. <laughs> They're heathens. They're going to act like heathens. They can do whatever they want to do. But in the church, in the church, we're allowed to commit sexual immorality? Well, it's a new day, brother. No, no. It's the doctrine of Balaam. So this is one of the reasons that I believe that coronavirus is here. It's a judgment upon the church, not the world, the church. Second thing is this. In America, we have aborted 60 million babies. We have murdered 60 million babies. Now, in Jeremiah 19, 4 through 6, you can read it. God is, is speaking against the children of Israel. And here's what he says in one, in one section in the end of verse 4. He says, they have filled this place with the blood of innocence. This is killing children. And they have built high places of Baal and burned their sons with fire. Israel was offering their children as sacrifices, burning their children in the fire. And you say, we're not doing that. Well, no, we're not. We're paying doctors to murder the children, dismember them, and sell their parts. So we're not burning our children. 
We're killing them and selling their parts. And you say, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Listen, church, the doctrine of Balaam has so gotten into our thinking. Do you realize that the church was predominant voters? Pro-abortion voting? Do you realize Christians support abortion? Christians, they support abortion. I, I, I can tell you, I could probably tell you more people who are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, who call themselves Christians. Now, are you saying, Donnie, they're not Christians? I'm not the judge. I am saying this. Homosexuality is a sin. Abortion is murder. It's a sin. Both of those are against God. So what are you, homophobic? No, I'm sinophobic. I'm sinophobic. I'm against sin. You know why? It brings judgment. It brings judgment. God is not doing this because he's angry and wanting to pummel people's heads. He's saying, I'm bringing a judgment to bring you to repentance. If you will repent, I'll restore you. I'll be with you. I'll be with your nation. I'll be with the church in this nation. But don't lose your saltiness. Don't turn the way of Balaam. Don't teach your people that it's okay to sin. It is not. Oh, brother, we're under the age of grace. Jesus spoke those words. They're in red if you have a red letter of vision. Uh, a version. Jesus spoke those words after death, burial, resurrection during the age of grace. And he said, not only that, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate, meaning I hate the doctrine of Balaam. And it's being taught in our churches today that it's okay to sin. It's okay to murder babies. If it helps your career, murder a baby. It's not okay. This is an abomination. Now, I want to just read this last part, of, and then we'll go into it in our next lesson. Uh, Jeremiah 19, listen to what he says. He's, God says, because they've done this, the, the murdering of children, he said, therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that this place will no longer be called Tophet or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Is this what we want? Is we want do we want America to become the valley of slaughter? because we're killing babies? And these are just two things. But these two things stem from our devaluing the Word of God. We no longer tremble at the Word of God. So this is why I believe the coronavirus is a wake-up call. I believe it's a judgment unto repentance, and I believe it's going to get worse before it gets better because I do not hear any call for repentance. And as I said, the church's vote is what keeps the abortion stuff legal. Now, we're not going to stop heathens from avoiding babies, but God says your vote counts. I don't mean counts that it's going to stop something. Your vote counts meaning he is looking. And you say, well, how do you know? I'm going to go to this last slide. Listen, Ezekiel 9, 4 through 7, and we'll cover this in the longer version. But here's what he says. This is when the glory was going to depart from Israel, from Jerusalem, because of the abominations in the land. Now listen to what God said. God said, he showed Ezekiel all the abominations, murdering babies, homosexuality in the church. I'm not talking about homosexuality out there. In the church. These are abominations to the Lord. They're abominations. Murder is an abomination. Homosexuality is an abomination. As I said, I'm not talking about the world. In the church. And listen to what God said in Ezekiel when these abominations were going on there. He said, okay, I'm going to depart. The glory is going to depart. I am leaving these people. But before I do, he said to some angels, and one had a scroll and a pen. He said, walk through the streets and listen to the conversations of men, those who are grieved over the abominations done here. Meaning this is what you're talking about. 
Listen to the conversations of men. Those who are grieved over the abominations, mark their foreheads and show them mercy. Those who are not grieved over the abominations, show them no mercy. Take your battle axes and your spears. Show them no mercy. Kill them, men, women, children, old and young. Kill them and show them no mercy. Why? Because they weren't grieved about the abominations going on there. Grieved about the abominations? Then how does God view? And by the way, Israel was God's covenant people. How does God's, what's God's view of people who call themselves by the name of Jesus and vote supporting abortion and vote supporting homosexuality? Both of these things God calls an abomination, and yet we vote supporting it. I wonder if God's listening to our conversations and saying, aren't those people called by the name of the Lord? Yes. Why are they saying they support abortion? Why are they casting their vote to continue abortion? Why are they casting their vote for same-sex marriage? Why are they casting their vote to bring in homosexual ministers? Listen to the conversations and send a judgment, hopefully to bring them to repentance. But if they won't repent, show no mercy. And start, here's what it says, start in the house of the Lord. This is why I'm saying, this is why I believe it's going to get worse before it gets better. I hear no call of repentance to the church. I'm not talking about to the world. The church needs to cry out to God and say, Lord, forgive us. We have, we have embraced the doctrine of Balaam, which you hate. And we have taught our people it's okay to commit, commit sexual immorality, which it's not. And we have told people it's okay to support in the name of woman's rights to murder babies. It's not. These are abominations of, to the Lord of which God is, I believe, bringing a judgment unto repentance. So, I say that to say I'll go into more detail on the longer version and the longer lesson to give scriptural reference for all these things. But this is what I believe is happening, and I realize I'll give an account of these words. And I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope coronavirus goes tomorrow. But I really don't believe it's going to. Because God is saying, I am coming into my church and I'm looking for a spotless bride who will be faithful to me, who will not lose their saltiness so that I can continue to reach out to this nation, to those who don't know. They don't know better, but we are to know better. So Lord, I just pray that you cause this message and if it convicts and, and, and infuriates people, I'm sorry. And I'm not sorry, I'm asking you Lord, deal with their hearts and that they would turn to you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Lord, I pray, I pray for the church in America to humble itself and pray and turn from its wicked ways and that we would be pleasing to you and that you would dwell in our midst and reach our nation and the other nations of the world. And we thank you for this in the mighty, mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah and King. Amen. God bless you. And if you want to know more of the details, I'll do a longer version also. But I ask you to prayerfully consider the things that I've said.